Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about how we can understand the data shapes. So in data analysis or statistics we have two different types of shapes uh, through which we can understand the behavior of data. So the first one is skewness and second one is kurtosis. So in this video uh, we will just look at the skewness. We will see the different types of data shapes through which we can know the different categories within the skewness and in the next video I will talk about the kurtosis. So let's go to the next slide and talk about uh, the different types of skewness we can have. So the very first shape on the left hand side is a positive or right skewed and here is a quick definition about uh, this, this type of a pattern of data. So it is called right skewed or positive distribution because it arises when the mean so mean would be somewhere here uh, in this case because it is always a central value. When the mean or average is increased by some unusually high values. So what we are expecting is on the right hand side we have uh, uh, some unusually high values and because of which our data distribution or the shape is right skewed. And in this case mean is always greater than the median. If you are not sure about uh, the mean and median, uh, then I would suggest to look at my previous video, uh, the measure of central tendency, where I have explained in detail about uh, what is mean, median and mode to identify the central point within the data. A good example to rep that represents this type of data is uh, uh, if you think about a class in which you have students who are usually getting average values or the average numbers but sometimes there are uh, students where which gets unusually high values so for example if this is the path and on the central you have around 50 or 60 percent numbers then most students will fall on that median or average but there will be a couple of students let's say four or five different students who will usually get numbers in 80s or 90s or even more than 90s. So in that type of data distribution you will find a positive skewness and that basically says that on an average your uh, students are having average numbers but there are few students who are getting most uh, very high numbers and because of that your data is positively distributed. Well there are other, uh, there can be other examples uh, which which can represent this data and I would suggest if you have one then please present, do a comment on this video by showing the example so that it can help others understanding it from uh, various examples. Uh, second one is uh, uh, normally distributed uh, data in which mean is equals to median and it happens because you don't have any positive or negative value on the both sides on the left or right side and in this case uh, your mean or mean is equals to median that means uh, your mean will be equal to median that goes by the definition of central tendency. So this is something a very uh, very rarely or in case of uh, a lot of data uh, which you are collecting and then you are creating a curve then you find it uh, uh, this, this such kind of uh, curve over there but it is rarely seen uh, uh, in, in a normal or a practical scenarios uh, where we have figured out a perfectly normally distributed cover well there may be many uh, but if you have uh, if you're aware about any of the one then do do comment it out and uh, for the uh, knowledge of others the last one i have is the negative distribution uh, negative distribution is something uh, opposite to your positive as it's as the curve also suggests and in that case on the uh, left hand side you have some unusually high values uh, from the mean and that's why your curve is skewed toward left and because of this it is called left skewed or negative distribution and in that case mean is always less than the median. So a quick typo mistake that I just noticed that uh, I had the unusually high values uh, which should be actually low values so because of that you will have the negative ones so if you will just go back to two or three second backs you will see 
it will be high in the state of flow. So I just corrected that. That's a small correction. So an example for this can be, uh, uh, let's say uh, you are recording some of the motor racing uh, data and in motor racing you, you have various participants and uh, obviously there is a winner so we got uh, first second and third people who is finishing the race very quickly so they are those values are unusually low values and then you get most of the other people who are at the around of average or at the end so most of most of them will arrive uh, in this uh, in this side of the area and there will be very few around two or three observation of all observations who will be capturing uh, a very less time to complete the motor race and that's how they will be awarded the winner so if you are doing some kind of a data analysis on that kind of data then you will find uh, this kind of curve uh, representing on on those data points so this is just one example as i said there can be various example and if you are aware of any anything else or any other example then do comment it out uh, for uh, increasing in the knowledge of others people so let's go ahead and uh, see it in the click view and what kind of settings that you can make or you need to make uh, if you need to do the similar thing or identify a pattern so here uh, I have uh, a data of uh, uh, shampoo uh, which is a manufacturing unit who create hair shampoo uh, and uh, they have uh, they are creating a sachet of around uh, 10.5 grams and uh, they want to identify how their process is doing that means are they filling less or are they filling more so that uh, they can uh, give the true level to uh, on on the sachets or if a user is using it then it the user should not feel like it is a less shampoo which is given in that particular sachet or, or more than or more shampoo so more is good but it should not be less <laughs> so here is a, a data that i have visualized over this so what you need to do in this kind of data so now in this case i don't have the measure any dimension on anything so how i have configured it just right click on this bar chart go to properties and within the dimension i have just given the shampoo uh, dimension that is again a number so it is kind of a histogram if you think and uh, after giving the dimension as shampoo and uh, then in expressions uh, what i'm doing is i'm just putting a count so how many values are coming on this particular point and then it is increment by incrementing by point 0.1 so when you will just specify dimension and expression it is very much possible that uh, you you should not get a value like or a chart like this so what you need to do the additional thing which i have done in the configuration of this chart is go into the axis and here you need to specify the continuous uh, option on the dimension axis so continuous will going to put the chart in the right way or how it should be uh, to see the pattern into the data or skewness into the data if I will just remove this and show you then you can see data is not in a very good format that means all of your observations or the data points are coming on the x-axis and it is it doesn't look really good so I will just put a continuous and click apply now my data is much more readable or understandable format which a human eye can interpret and see some kind of a pattern in this so what pattern you see in this case um, so you have seen my uh, in, in my slides the three different kind of pattern negative skewed positive skewed or normally distributed so do comment it out uh, what kind of pattern that you see into this and uh, probably uh, I may comment back to you and suggest you what pattern it is the second one is the second example I have is from the loan processing so here is a loan processing data and uh, it's basically shows in how many days a uh, loan the your loan or any loan which came into the bank uh, or NBFC got processed so if I double click over here here is my uh, loan data which has been uh, plotted on this chart bar chart and showed some kind of distribution 
So what distribution it is, again, I am leaving it to you to identify because practice will make you perfect in identifying the chart pattern. So I would suggest you again go back if you are not sure which pattern is this, then go back a few moments back to the slides and try to understand it or relate it from there what pattern it is and comment it out in the in this video to tell what pattern you identify over here. So that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss and give you the information about the skewness into that data and uh, I will meet you in the new video with a new topic.